Morning and welcome to Bethel Live. We'd like to give you all a really warm welcome, whether you're regulars or just visiting us today. We'll be singing some fantastic hymns, plus a song for the children. And later on, we'll be hearing from our friend Louise, who will be reading from the Bible for us. Nick, our assistant pastor, will be giving us a talk from the Bible, and we hope that all together we will meet with God and we will glorify him. And do stick around for after the service. There'll be a Zoom call. We'd love to see you and hear from you. In the meantime, get comfy, grab a cuppa, grab a Bible, and enjoy the service. Life can get us down Things that happen make us frown Slip on a banana skin Trip and fall into a bin Sometimes we just wonder why Things that happen make us cry We get ill or hurt ourselves But we can always tell each other We can always tell each other God is big Sometimes people make us sad Wind us up and make us mad Call us names or pull our hair Laugh about our underwear Sometimes we feel on our own Things that happen make us grow Nothing seems to go our way But we can always tell each other We can always tell each other Welcome, well, welcome again, again to, to the Bethel News, News Desk. Desk. It's great, it's great to, be to be together. together. As, As in past weeks, weeks, I'm going to share a few things that, that are happening around the church, things, things that we can join in with, and then, and then some, some personal news to help us support and pray, and pray for each other. We'd love, We'd love to, to pray intelligently, intelligently for each other, so if, if you have prayer points in future weeks, please do feed those in to your community group leaders who can pass them on or directly to Sharon, who is collating prayer information. So, so first, first of all, to say that after, after the service this morning, all of us are invited, are invited to a Zoom, Zoom online, online catch-up catch up together, just, just a chance to chat. To chat. So, so as soon as, soon as the service, service is finished, please, please grab, grab a cup of coffee and then, and then join, join by, by clicking, clicking on the link that was sent by email, email on Friday. Friday. And the, and idea, the idea, idea is that just, just like, like after, after a normal church service, service we, we can, can just get together, we split into small groups and just catch up with each other. And we're, and we're very aware, aware that, that community, community groups, groups are meeting regularly, regularly which, is great, which is great, but this, but this gives the opportunity for us to also catch up with others outside, with others outside of, our of our community groups. groups. Hopefully, Hopefully we're, we're aware, aware as, well as well that there, there are lots of other opportunities to get together online regularly each week. So we're, so we're now having two prayer, prayer meetings, meetings, one on a Tuesday evening at 8 o'clock and the other, and the other on Friday, Friday morning at 11 o'clock. And we've also got, got a weekly Bible, Bible study at 11 o'clock on Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday morning, morning and that's focusing on Jonah. These, These are open to everybody and it's and great to take the opportunities to get together, chat and actually see each other's faces, 
and, and look, look at God's, God's word together and, and pray, pray together. together. So please, so please do join in those if you can. can. Um, the, the links, links to, get to get onto those, those meetings were sent, sent out on Monday, Monday this week. week. And, and you can use those, those each week as there are over meetings. meetings. And, you and you can also, also access, access those through the church calendar on Church, church Suite. But if, but you've, if got you've got any questions, questions or you're having any trouble, trouble accessing, accessing things via right, Zoom, please, please do get in touch, touch and we can help you with that. Also, also, do remember, remember to look, look at the church, the church calendar, calendar regularly, regularly on Church, church Suite. Many, Many of you will have access, access to that. And, and you can just, just make sure, sure that you're keeping up to date with everything that's happening. happening. You, might you might be surprised, surprised to see how many things, things are actually happening, happening even during, during the lockdown. lockdown. And, and if, if you are organising any kind of online activity for Bethel, Bethel please do give me the information and I can make sure that that gets included in the calendar. Also, also, just, just a, note a note to church, church members, we were, were due to have, to have a meeting this Wednesday, this Wednesday evening. That is, that is of course, sadly cancelled. But, but do look out for an update from the elders, from the elders which, which they will be sending out, out in early, early May, May just, just to keep church, church members up to date with what's happening. So now, so now on to some personal, personal news from people, people around, around the church so that we can pray for each other. Please do continue to pray for Sophie Feeney. She unfortunately, she unfortunately has been poorly. She, she has been in hospital, hospital again with an infection, infection and, and having, having more seizures. And this, and this also, also means that she unfortunately was not well enough, enough to have her last round, round of chemotherapy. chemotherapy. She, is she is now home, and we're thankful, thankful for that, and she, and she is recovering. recovering. But she's said to be in good spirits, but quite weak still. still. So please, so please remember, remember her, and also keep, keep remembering Becky and Clem and the whole family. Let's, Let's also, also keep, keep praying, praying for Elaine and her, her family for the loss, loss of her father. She and, she and her sister, sister are also still caring for her mother, who has COVID-19. She, she is improving, but still needs care and support. And, support. and, also, and also remember, remember the, rest the rest of the family, for Keith and Ethan and Iona, because Elaine is, is away staying, staying with her mum much of the time, so they are apart. And please, and please we also pray, pray for Al and, and May and, and Reese who, who are having a tough time, time at the moment. Many of you will know that May is, is a community matron and she provides care in several, several of our local, local care, care homes for older folks. Folk. So, so that's a really, really tough, tough job at the moment. moment. And unfortunately and this week she developed, developed cough and cold and symptoms. symptoms. So, so she's now at home self-isolating. She's had a COVID-19 test and waiting for results. So please pray for them and for the health of all of them. However, However, we're glad, glad to report, report that David, David London London is much, is much better, better, but again, but again please, please keep, keep him in your prayers, prayers as he continues to grieve for the loss of his wife, wife Pat. Pat. And, and also, also, let's, let's keep, keep remembering Keith and Jill, and Jill Thomas. Thomas. We, we shared in the previous week that Jill, Jill has recently been diagnosed, diagnosed with breast, breast cancer. cancer. She, she is, is now on medication, so let's just pray that that will stop the cancer from spreading and also that the side effects will be minimal. As usual, As usual, you will soon receive, receive the prayer bulletin, and please have a look, have a look at that. that. One, One of the main focuses this week is on praying, praying for the teachers in the congregation, and we have, and we have quite, quite a few teachers at Bethel, at Bethel. so please, so please take, take some time to read what, what they shared in the bulletin, bulletin. and they, they particularly ask for prayer, um, help, help in using technology, technology that they are using to try and continue teaching children at home, and some of them are just working from home, some of them are still having to go to school, part-time part -time. and, the, and future, the future the next term is very, very up, up in the air, the air for them so, so please pray for peace and wisdom and another, and another thing that really comes out from what they, what they shared is their concern, their concern for the general well-being of children, children particularly who are in, in lockdown, lockdown in difficult family situations, situations. so please, so please look, look out for the bulletin do you pray, do pray through that, that. You'll, you'll also see there's a prayer request for people, people who, who are particularly suffering from anxiety, anxiety and other mental, mental health issues, issues that, that are being exacerbated by the lockdown. We're going to We're going pray together, together soon, and Gareth, and Gareth is, going is going to lead those prayers. prayers. But, before but before we do that, that we're going to hear from a couple, a couple of our members, members and that's Nathaniel and, and Sarah Fisher, Fisher. And, they're and they're going to share, share with us how the lockdown has been for them, some of some the challenges, and also, and also the ways that they experience God's grace, grace particularly as they are at home, home juggle juggle working and looking after their two young children, children Autumn and, and Ethan. Hi there, I'm Keith, one of the leaders at Bethel, and I'm here talking to um, Nathaniel, Sarah Fisher, and Autumn and Ethan. Hi there, how are you all? 
Okay, um, thank you. All right. Yeah. How, nice, nice wave from there, Autumn. Um, right, how is uh, how is family life going in the midst of all this lockdown? Autumn, how are you doing? Are you fine? Yeah. Good. How's, how's family life going at the moment? Yeah, it's okay. Um, it's been a bit of a learning curve over the last few weeks. Um, so I missed the first week of lockdown uh, when my week, uh, our work closed um, a week earlier than the government suggested. So I was actually in London um, and I came back. Um, yes, we can go in the books one. Um, but yeah, we're um, just trying to get used to a new normal, um, yeah. like house, obviously. Yeah. Um, and we're just, um, yeah, it's interesting trying to juggle work and kids at yes. the same time. Quite intense, definitely. Yeah. But it's, uh... Oh, that's nice. Oh, lovely, Arthur. And you're right, Sarah, how are you? Yeah, doing all right. Yeah, um, it, yeah. It's, as many other parents, it's quite exciting to entertain the kids all the time. But we're doing. We're, we're getting there. Yeah. Um, now you both work for a charity, and Sarah, you've just started working for the same charity as Nathaniel. Tell us both what you do and how's work at the present moment, and how's it affected by uh, all the stuff going on just now. Sure. Yeah. So we work for. In UK, which is a, um, a charity uh, which uh, uh, provides child sponsorship, um, which is it's a wonderful charity, and I feel so privileged to be there. Um, I'm on the customer service team, um, so answering calls uh, and emails and things like that, and welcoming people to well to the sponsorship basically. Um, so I'm actually training from home. Um, I started too late to do. <laughs> started too late. Um, but they're really flexible and um, really well at training me. So good. Yeah, and I'm the lead tester, so I am in charge of testing um, everything for the company. Um, um, yes. So I, I, IT testing is that? Yeah. So software and um, all websites, that kind of thing. Okay. Right. And so it's work busy for both of you. Yes. It feels like it, yeah, yeah. definitely. So you're, you're working full time and you're not you're not being furloughed or anything. No, no. no. Um, so I unfortunately am too important to be furloughed apparently. Um, so I um, they probably furloughed about sixty percent of the company, um, if not a bit more. Um, with the potential of increasing that as um, we go further into lockdown. Um, so yeah. And that's increased my workload. It means that I've got less resource. I've got more um, work and less people to help support me. So, yeah, it's difficult. Yeah. Uh, Autumn, what's it like having mummy and daddy home all the time? Is it nice? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was the right answer. <laughs> Good answer, yes. Um, so what is there specifically to pray for for you as a family and in your work situation? Um, I've had to cut my hours down, so um, I'm working slightly less. But um, my workload has increased, um, so I could easily work um, an extra, you know, I could easily do my 35 hours plus an extra day on top um, and still be behind. So that's really hard um, to try and drop that. Um, and basically, we work at least, you know, 12 hour days because we've got. I start work at seven in the morning and then um, I take over looking after the kids at one um, and then they go to bed at seven. So um, mm. I'm working on Sarah then is probably up a bit before me because she's got Ethan who's been waking up at five. Um, so we're just, it's non-stop. Yeah, it's it's non-stop. So it's really hard yeah. to find time for yourself. Um, and it's really hard to, yeah, to find time to be a couple, um, usually it's eat tea and then go to bed. Um, Maybe if we're lucky, we get something on the TV, but <laughs> someone falls asleep. Before the end. So just <clears throat> praying for quality family time rather than, yeah. And Sarah, for you, how, what, what yeah, can you say um, for you? Prayer for, I suppose just my, my head is just so full because I'm learning a new job um, yes. and trying to nice. sort of do it from home. So there's no downtime, you know, commuting would normally be 
de-stressing time, but um, obviously I don't get that. But um, I mean, we're really, I feel really blessed to be there, um, and they're really good for us. Like, Commission's working really well to do what, we, what works for us. But yeah, prayer for um, mental energy <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Okay, good. Well, that's that's great. Um, but you obviously you obviously sponsor children over in Africa. How is Africa being affected by by all this? Is there is there much problems? Yeah. So um, so we work in twenty five countries around the world. So um, do quite a lot of Africa. We do um, Asia and um, Central America. Um, we've started to have beneficiaries, so we start to have children who have actually been affected directly. Mm. Um, obviously, a lot of the countries we're working in have introduced lockdown protocols, which means churches aren't opening, mm. which projects um, have to run in a very different manner. So um, our staff are now going to families, um, homes, taking food, parcels, mm. and trying to keep themselves as protected. Obviously, um, we're dealing with the poorest of the poor. Mm. So it means that they don't receive medical care mm. in most of the countries we're working in. So if they do get sick, um, then it's mm. very serious. If they do, um, they usually are looked after by elder relatives um, or their families are doing jobs which um, require them to be out um, working at the time. So it means that they either they've lost their employment or um, you know they're they're just not able to work through um, ill health. And if they catch the, the coronavirus, unfortunately, um, it's very hard for them to gain the medical help, which compassion can offer, but unfortunately, um, there, isn't, there isn't really a cure um, at the time. So, um, yeah, it's, it's hard. And is the charity, being in the charity sector, a lot of charities being affected, is the charity itself still getting revenue in? Is it being affected greatly as your income at the moment? Yeah, yes and no. Um, we're just, we're all blown away by um, how, how much the sponsors are sort of stepping up the game, basically, and saying, how can we help? What can we do? You know, can we give more? Which is really encouraging, really inspiring. Um, so, you know, we've had a few people who haven't been able to carry on with the sponsorship. Um, but yeah, otherwise, we're quite impressed and quite, you know, yeah, encouraged how people want to help. Good. Well, thank you very much. It's great talking to you. And uh, we will pray for you as you continue working from home and learning thank your you. job and uh, looking after the children. Bye, all. Bye, Ethan. Bye, Autumn. Bye. Thank you. And hello, Bethel, uh, or those that have just joined us on this uh, um, web event. It's really good to be here. Good to virtually see you, at least. Um, and good to come before you um, and pray to an amazing and awesome God. Uh, the Sullies are really thankful at the moment for all that uh, that we've experienced over these last few weeks. No significant hardships um, and a real time of blessing and family time. But I, but I appreciate that that's not everyone's experience. Some of us um, are feeling anxious and feeling concerned and worried about ourselves or our loved ones. Um, so let's bring all of our needs before our God in prayer. So Father, we thank you once again that we come in the name of, of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We're reminded at, at this Easter time, Lord, that um, you are God that, that understands humanity. You understand all it is that we're going through in these times, Lord, of, of separation. And yet, Lord, you aren't a God that is a bystander, but a God that intervenes. And we just thank you, Lord, that um, your love for us endures forever. Your love overcomes our anxieties and our fears. And Lord, when we're at our lowest, when we rely and call on you, Lord, we are at our strongest because our faith and hope is in a risen saviour and a loving and righteous God. Lord, we just come before you and pray for um, the needs that we have as a church, Lord. We pray particularly at the moment for some of the church family that are, are really struggling, Lord, with health issues. We pray particularly for Sophie, and her uh, illness, Lord, and her health is impacting the available treatment that she can have. So Lord, we just pray that you will, um, you will draw near to her and her family, that they would experience a realness of you, Lord, in the reading of your word, in the enjoying of, 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 of songs, Lord, or just talking about you, Lord, that in those moments sort of anxiety and concerns, just flood them with your love and the fact that you are God that's in control. Nothing is outside of your will or purpose, Lord, and we thank you for this. 
and just help Sophie get better. And we thank you for the nursing staff that are treating her and pray for wisdom and guidance there, Lord, in that situation. There are many at Bethel, Lord, that are, are putting their lives at risk every day or on the front line, whether they're um, NHS workers or working in care homes, Lord, or working in hospices or even in supermarkets or other essential activities, Lord. We thank you for them and for their community focus, Lord, and the desire to help. But Lord, we do pray for May, Reese and Al at this time, for we know that um, May going into care homes is, is, uh, is a significant concern to her. Uh, but particularly because of she's showing symptoms, Lord, and has now been sent home to self-isolate. That can cause anxiety and just tension in the family, Lord, because the, 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 the cycle of events changes and the disruption of self-isolation can, can be a real frustration, Lord. So we pray that we will help her, Lord, both prayfully and practically as a family, Lord, um, as they carry about um, their day-to-day -day activities. And Lord, we pray for those that are in the church that are teachers. We're, we have a, a great number of, of Bethel um, family that are working in, in schools even now, Lord. And it's such a disruption to all of us, but particularly for teachers who have such a concern over their pupils, but have to do this in a remote way, having to deal with technology challenges, Lord. We pray for, for wisdom um, and we just pray for calm when things go wrong, Lord, in the technology. But Lord, above all, we pray that they'll be able to reach out to the, to the pupils and the parents, Lord, and express a care and a concern over the desire for pupils to continue in their studies, that they will, they will balance the disruption with a, a new commitment, Lord, so that they will continue to do the schooling. For we know that at some point, Lord, this will all um, end and we will try and resume back to normality, whatever that is. But Lord, we pray that the teachers will um, not have to deal with a significant deficit in, in the pupils in their education. We pray that the, the individuals and, and even our young people at Bethel, Lord, will know discernment and discipline, Lord, in where to spend the right time, how much time to spend on the Xbox or the computers, Lord, and how much time to spend studying. And even, Lord, how much time to st spend studying your word. We pray that the teachers, Lord, will, will have a sense of, of um, calm, Lord, but also a sense of purpose and a sense of peace as you work through them, Lord. And for those teachers that are anxious, Lord, we just pray for, again for your drawing near to them and that you are God that addresses fear by bringing peace. We thank you for the confidence that we have in you, Lord. So Lord, we just close now and, and I thank you once again for the fact that we don't know what tomorrow brings, but we do know where we will be tomorrow when our faith is in you. We thank you for the hope that one day faith will give way to sight and we will be with you forever. But until that time, Lord, as your people strengthen us in our knowledge of you, in our love for you and a desire to serve you and bring you glory. For we ask it in the worthy name of your son, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So thanks, guys. All right, then I'm sure I'll see you very soon.
Hi, good morning. The reading this morning is from the Psalms, taken from Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord, who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No, dis no disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honour him. With a long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Well, good morning, Bethel. It's so great to see you uh, this, uh, well, I say this morning. Um, I'm obviously recording this a bit earlier. So about that song, isn't that just a, such a fantastic song? I mean, when I read it, I thought, what comfort, what confidence we can have in God. And I thought I must preach on this in a couple of weeks when it's my turn. Until I realised that as I read the psalm, it almost feels like this psalm struggles to be true. I don't know if you know what I mean. Um, if you look through it, there are amazing promises. Perhaps they come to a pinnacle or a peak at uh, verse 10. So look at that. Verse 10 says, no harm will come near you. No disaster will come near your tent. Wow. Uh, is, that, is that strictly true? I mean, we know, don't we, that many Christians struggle uh, or suffer with, with terrible things. Uh, Christians at this time have died of coronavirus. And the psalm points uh, in verses three and six talks about pestilence and protection from pestilence. And yet we're not completely protected from coronavirus. You could almost say that this psalm, is it much more than just uh, nice sounding fluff? So, um, so as we think about it, uh, at this point, what we need to do is we need to take a step back um, and put on our, our bird's eye view of the Bible. So we need, we need our big picture lens. And when we, when we look through that lens, we can see that actually um, these sorts of promises that we've read, so, you know, everything will be perfect, everything will be good. Those promises are what we call covenant, covenant language. Yes, that's a, that's a big, uh, big word, big phrase. Um, it's, it's really not that complicated. So basically, you know that God has called his people out of Egypt. They were slaves. He called them out and he gave them the Ten Commandments. So you've got to live my way, yada, yada. Um, and then there will be blessings, peace, provision. Um, those are covenant promises and that's covenant language. Um, and there's another side to the same coin, same covenant, which is uh, make sure that you don't fail at this covenant, or there will be plagues, famines, wars, death. And this, this stuff, the blessings for obedience, 
the curses for disobedience. This is all over Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, especially Le Leviticus 26. Look at that later if you want. Um, and then later in Israel's history, the covenant blessings and the curses, they're applicable to God's people, but they are intensely shown in the king. He is the measure of how the covenant is going. Often God promises blessings to the king as the representative of God's people. So Psalm 2, uh, God says, I have installed my king in Zion. And uh, God says, Zion is Jerusalem. Uh, God says about his enemies, about the king's enemies, you, you will break them with a rod of iron. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. The covenant with the king. And God calls the king his son in Psalm 2. So there you go. This, this king, this king lives in complete security. He has success. The deadly pestilence will not come near you, Psalm 91 says. No sweat. All is good for the king in this covenant. And in Psalm 91, it starts, doesn't it, by, by, setting the, by casting the net wide. It says, verse 1, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High. Well, that could be anyone, couldn't it? Whoever, whoever that might be. But soon the psalm narrows down to one person. Verse three, surely he will save you. Singular, just one, just you. Who's that? Verse seven, a thousand may fall by your side, 10,000 by your right hand, but it will not come near you. Who is that? This is, this is someone who fights battles. Sounds like someone who even commands thousands under him. Verse 14, look. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. This is about someone who loves God. In fact, who loves God enough that because of his love for God, God will rescue him. This psalm, Psalm 91, is talking to a great and a good king. And that king is so blessed. The only problem is uh, that the, the kings of Israel turned out not to be so great. And over time, it emerges that those kings are not this king. Israel did not receive this blessing in this psalm. In fact, they were invaded many times. So this wonderful psalm is written for a wonderful king with a wonderful people underneath him. So we're almost, we've done around, you know, we're back to square one now. This is a nice sounding psalm, but who is this for? And the answer is that this psalm uh, is about Jesus. It is for Jesus. My first point is that this psalm is a promise to Jesus. It's true for Jesus because he's perfect. It's not true for the kings of Israel because they're not perfect. And it's not true for me because I'm not perfect. This psalm is a promise to Jesus. And yet, somehow, something inside me, when I read this, something inside me connects with this psalm. Doesn't it for you? I listened to uh, one of my favourite preachers uh, preach on this psalm. He said that as he set about uh, preparing that week, God set him a practical, which I like that, that sort of labelling of what God might do. I'm actually quite familiar with this, that God says sometimes to a preacher, he says, on Sunday, you will not just teach this. You are going to live this truth over this week as you prepare. And so uh, for my favourite preacher, or one of my favourite preachers, God set a practical. So that um, he preached this message on the Sunday. Um, uh, so this message, Psalm, 90, Psalm 91, uh, say, for example, verse 15 says, he will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. So he preached it on the Sunday, but two days earlier on the Friday, he was in hospital having an emergency operation on his eye. And during that operation, um, he was conscious. And he said, at times like that, you know, you can't think too deeply, can you? Um, but he said, through that day and through that time, this simple idea sustained him from verse one of this psalm. Verse one, 
I rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And he was there saying to himself, I rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I rest, I, I am in his shadow. That sustained him through. So yes, point one, this psalm is a promise to Jesus. But something about it connects with us, doesn't it? Something about it connected with that preacher that I just mentioned. Don't, don't we as Christians, don't we feel his protection sometimes? And it's blurry. It's not quite defined, is it? Um, exactly how God, exactly how he might protect us. But I feel comforted as I read this psalm. And this is the reason. This is the reason why it's true for Jesus um, and not me. And yet somehow it's true for me. This is the reason. Ready? Easter. That's it. That's why it's true for Jesus and for me. You see, um, when I became a Christian, there was an old me. This old me. Um, when I became a Christian, this me died. Now, this me doesn't love God, um, and the promises in the psalm are not for this me. But Jesus, here we are, here's Jesus. Jesus takes this old me. And Jesus dies. Jesus dies. He pays the price for the rebellion of me. So he dies. And of course, Easter says that three days later, Jesus rose from the dead. And when I became a Christian, there was a new me. A new me with new life. I'm reborn. Jesus is alive and he shares his life with me. There's the new me. And so the new me is in Christ. There I am, in Christ. And that means that this psalm is true for Jesus. And look where I am. It's true for me as well. So my second point is that this psalm is, is a promise to Christians. It's a promise to Jesus, but Christians are in Jesus. So it's a promise to Christians. And that is just, that is just such good news, isn't it? So um, let's talk about this protection. We're protected. What is this? What is this promise? Obviously, uh, for Jesus, Jesus could have completely just avoided all suffering. Jesus is God. He is eternal, powerful, comfortable. Jesus is that king in that psalm. He will smash his enemies like pottery. If there's a rebellion, it will not come near his tent. Jesus absolutely could take this promise from Psalm 91 um, and just sit there on his throne in comfortable power. He could do that. But instead of staying on his throne in heaven, he became a human and he came to earth. And this, this Jesus doing this very much alarms Satan. Satan does not want Jesus rescuing people. And that is precisely why Satan uses this psalm to tempt Jesus. Jesus has come um, to rescue, and that means that he's going to suffer. He's going to die in our place, like I just explained. And so when Jesus tempted, uh, sorry, when Satan tempted Jesus in the wilderness in Matthew 4, Satan says to Jesus, Jesus, um, you, you are the king from Psalm 2. This, this promise in, uh, in Psalm 91, this is for you, Jesus. Take it. Take this promise. And uh, normally we don't listen to Satan, but in this case, Satan is right that Jesus is the heir to this promise. He could have taken it and Jesus turned it down. Jesus chose to enter into suffering because Jesus knew something that is mysterious and wonderful and very difficult to understand. Jesus knew that God would somehow use his suffering. And, it, and this, this boggles the mind. It raises a thousand questions. But here is a true fact. Suffering is somehow one of the building blocks that God uses to build his church. God uses suffering to build his church. Jesus was mocked, 
insulted, beaten, tortured to death. And God used his death and his suffering to, to build us, to rescue us, to build his church. So, so listen, you, you uh, Christian, you who might be in Christ, what does this mean for us? Well, we are the students, Jesus is the teacher, and Jesus says, Luke 6, Jesus says, the student is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like their teacher. So Jesus is the teacher and he suffered. So you're the student, so am I. So we, we will experience suffering. Now, your suffering uh, can be used by God to build you and to build others. Now, how exactly, how will that happen? That is worth pondering. Um, I read something uh, by one of my favourite psychologists a while ago. Um, he gives one example of how suffering can wrench you out of cruise control and it can force you um, to make a change. So he writes, he writes, it is the diagnosis of cancer that throws us face to face with how short this life is. Seeing the real possibility of my death creates a newness. It creates a drama that calls most people to rewrite what is left of their life. He goes on to say this is not just about cancer, but any tragedy. He says any tragedy, it disrupts the status quo. It compels attention, focus, engagement and choice. This change drives us to write what we really want to say because we have only a few blank pages left and little ink in our pen. Now, this is not one size fits all. Everybody's tragedy is unique, but you can see how suffering and struggle can be used as, as the cause for making something new. God uses suffering to build his church. So, so God is rescuing and building his people. That's what he did through Jesus. And that process is certain. It might involve times of great difficulty, but it cannot be stopped, not by plague, not by persecution, not by war or famine, because, G because of Jesus, our place in God's kingdom is safe. Now, if all of that has uh, confused you a little bit or gone over your head, I think Tim Keller, um, he has this book where he talks about lots of Psalms, My Rock, My Refuge, and he puts it very clearly. OK, so he talks about the pinnacle of the promise, verse 10, which says no harm will overtake you. And he explains it simply like this. He says, the real you, the one God is creating, cannot be harmed. Put it like that. The real you, the one that God is creating, cannot be harmed. God uses suffering to build his church. And this psalm is a promise to Christians and the real you, the one that God is creating, cannot be harmed. Now, this sort of this eternal perspective, what, what God is building. This is the perspective of Jesus when he turns down that promise. He turns down Satan. His eyes are set not on comfort now. His eyes are set on what God is making. His eyes are set on you. And the future hope of sharing this promise with you. That's what Jesus is thinking about. God is committed to you. He, he is building up you. And our task is to find rest and peace in God through all of that, through what he's doing, through the now. So when arrows fly, we can say verse two, this is our, our task, say verse two, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my fortress, my God in whom I trust. I want to read to you a little bit by this, uh, by this guy, Mark Ashton. Um, so he um, was a vicar in Cambridge. And in December 2008, he was diagnosed with inoperable gallbladder cancer. After that, he lived 15 months. So he died in April 2010. And in those 15 months, knowing where he was going, he wrote this, this little booklet, which was published later in 2010. And he's writing facing his looming death. 
Um, there is a funny moment in here where he says that he learns uh, that he needs to break the news a little more gently to people. Uh, to begin with, he was very harsh. Uh, he says he went to the hairdresser um, and this poor girl, she starts cutting his hair and she asks how he is. And he just says, well, uh, actually, I'm dying. I got the news. I, I won't be here in a year. And the doctor told me. And the reaction that he got from that girl in the hairdresser was just so explosive and emotional. Um, he says that she, she cut his hair, but she, she could not utter one more word. Um, so he learned to be a little bit more gentle with, with the news. But he says, <clears throat> talking about healing, he says, I do not think it entirely wrong to seek healing, but I have not particularly wanted that for myself. And this has puzzled some. Can you see, he's not grasping for life now, for comfort now, for ease now. He says a little later about the resurrection of Jesus. My death forces me to face the resurrection of Jesus. It's of crucial significance to every person who faces their own death honestly. He says, until I'm dead, I cannot know what will happen after my death. But Jesus has already risen. If I know him now, I will know him then. He is my assurance in dying and, in, and his resurrection is central to Christianity. Do you see his confidence? He can say, verse 7 of, of Psalm 91, he can say, a thousand can fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come near me. This psalm is a promise for Christians. The real you, the one that God is building, cannot be harmed. Now listen, if you don't know God as your saviour, if you don't know Jesus as your saviour, well, you can, you can know him. Um, anyone can ask Jesus to, uh, to take the old me and to, oh, there I am, oh, the old me, and to, and to give me this new life. Anyone can ask Jesus to do that. Um, so why don't you speak to a Christian that you know if you're interested in that, or feel free to email me at assistant.pastor at bethelbaptist.org.uk. Um, and can I, to finish, can I invite us all to read uh, the final verses, verses 14 to 16, knowing that these are ours because of Jesus. Let's read verse 14. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him. For he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honour him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Well, let's just take a moment to pray. Father God, thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you that he did not take those promises that he could have, but instead chose to go to the cross to rescue us. And Lord, we're so sorry that we do not follow you like we should, but we, we praise you um, for rescuing us, for sending Jesus to rescue us. And Lord, we, um, we want to pray that we would follow you um, like we should. We want to pray that you would be working in us to change us. And Lord, even when that work that you do is difficult uh, for us, keep us, keep us looking to you. Keep us having that eternal perspective so that we, so that we have our eyes set on what you are doing. Help us to follow you and take refuge in you. Um, so that's the end of our service now. Um, don't forget that, like Paula said, we are having our uh, a church on Zoom. Um, so the link for that will be in the email that Paula will have sent out yesterday, Saturday. Um, so do check out, do look for that. Um, or you could also find it in the calendar on Church Suite. Goodbye. <laughs>